Hello everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. I have been having such fun with uh, these videos I'm doing on traditions around the world, music and, and cultural things. And I, I've got some thoughts about New Year's Eve and global New Year's Eve foods and traditions that I find so fascinating. It's just amazing to think that we are in our world here and in our world that we're familiar with our cultural contact, construct. And around the world right now, people are experiencing New Year's Eve in a completely different way. And I just think it's fun because we have women in our 60 and me community in 180 countries. We are we have representation just about around the world. And it's just so exciting to me to think that people are watching now from, you know, from uh, South America, from Mexico, from Norway, New Zealand, um, England, of course, United States. States, Canada, and Germany, Switzerland, all these places where we've got sisters joining us and meeting and talking about the holidays and, you know, getting through this fun time. But the new year is approaching and people all around the world are saying goodbye to the old year and looking forward to a new year, 2024. It sounds so, it sounds so big. The number just sounds so big. When I think about, I was born in 1948 and it's like, oh my gosh, 2024, that's a lot of time. But you know, it's, it's a beautiful opportunity to just reset, you know, and recharge yourself. But all around the world, people are doing strange and wonderful things to bring in the new year. A lot of it's mythology, you know, people are doing things that they have done based on their religion or based on their, um, their cultural beliefs. But also some of them are just traditions that appear from almost Almost nowhere and they're just unusual and strange like in Spain in Spain they do this at midnight people eat grapes 12 grapes each for every dong of the bell as it, go, is it, as it goes you know through the midnight hour 12 grapes who would have thought I have no idea where that one started. Maybe someone can tell me. But yeah, the 12 grape thing is, is very fascinating. But that's what people do in Spain right at the moment of midnight. I mean, we drop the ball at Times Square. We, you know, we let light off fireworks in, in our world. But um, that's what they're doing in Spain. In Japan, I'm reading my notes too, by the way, because I cannot remember all these things myself. But um, it's called <clears throat> Toshikoshi Soba. Toshikoshi Soba is buckwheat noodles. And this is what they eat on New Year's Eve. I love that word, Toshi, Toshi Koshi Soba, Toshi Koshi Soba, and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that correct. <laughs> but anyway, I'm making my best effort, guys, all my friends in Japan. But anyway, it's, it's a buckwheat noodle, which is eaten on New Year's Eve, and it symbolizes longevity and endurance and resilience, which are the traits that they believe you need to get through to the next year. I think that's really cool. In Brazil, they eat something completely different. They eat lentils and pork. Now, lentils signify to them wealth and prosperity, and pork represents progress. Again, these are mythologies that are ingrained in, in the different cultures, and that's what they eat on New Year's Eve in Brazil because they're eaten together for a prosperous and strong New Year. I love that. I think that's really cool. Actually, I love Brazil. Has anybody ever been to Brazil? I went there once um, to visit my family. They, they, were, they were spending Christmas there, <clears throat> and I went to Cambuca. And it was amazing, Fortaleza. And that's the only part of Brazil I've ever seen, but I loved it. Anywho, uh, next one is Denmark. Now, I'm definitely going to not pronounce this one right. Kren, Krensekej is a tower of almond cake. And it's celebra celebration, and it's really deeply ingrained, apparently, in the Nordic holiday tradition. So Denmark and Copenhagen is brilliant, if you ever get a chance to go there. Um, I love all my sisters in Copenhagen. Greece. Greece is Vala... Sopita, velo sopita, which is a sweet bread. Notice the trend. <laughs> and in this bread is a hidden coin. And whoever gets the co the piece of the of the bread, the the cren, uh, the vasilobita, they are the blessed one. They get the good luck for the new year. And there's a tradition in England around this too. And I can't remember quite what it is, but it's about a coin in a loaf of bread or in a cake. And if you get the coin in your slice. Um, it's so funny. They did this one for the kids, uh, the daycare center at, or not daycare, the a toy library at my village. And they, um, they put pieces of, um, I forget what it was. It wasn't a coin, but it was something lucky in every piece. <laughs> so all the kids would think they were lucky for the new year, which is great. Um, so that's Greece. And I love Greece. You know, I love Greece. I'm wearing Greece makeup today. Um, I've got, this is my favorite, favorite ice shadow in the world. It's by a company called Seventeen. You can't get it. Sorry to tease you, but um, I've tried. I got it when I was on holiday. But anyway, Greece is lovely. It's a beautiful country. Um, Italy. Cotincino con lettici. Oh, I'm, I'm really not doing well with that one. Cotincino con lettici. 
I think that's right. Sausage and lentils again. Lentils Brazil. That's interesting. Just after midnight, bring good fortune. Lentils um, resemble coins. I guess they do. They're kind of flat like a coin, but they are they're considered in Italy to be very good, healthy food and great for New Year's Eve. And that's on that page. Do you have anything in your family that you always eat on Christmas or New Year's Eve? Now, we always had mince pies, but that's more of a Christmassy thing. I don't know about New Year's Eve, whether there was anything. Champagne? Does that count? I don't know. I, don't, I think that's one of, that has been in the past one of my traditions. But anyway, in the States, um, US. Now, I had a really hard time with this one because I couldn't find anything except for one thing um, that was considered like um, a New Year's Eve meal. And it's, it's in the United States, the only thing I could come up with was black eyed peas and colored greens. This is, of course, a southern U.S. Um, you know, tradition, and it's to attract, again, fortune and prosperity. There's a theme here for New Year's Eve. We want the new year to be more financially secure than the one we've come through. <sighs> anyway, but so, yeah, colored greens. Now, I have never, ever tried a black eyed pea. I wouldn't even know what to, whether I could recognize a black eyed pea. <laughs> but, I don't, but that's apparently, is there anything else in the States? Now, when I asked the question to our community, a lot of people came back with foods that they eat as a tradition on New Year's Eve. But I don't think anybody came up with anything that like, countrywide. And that's part of the challenge in the States, isn't it? You're like a 50 countries almost, or 50 different um, states. But in Germany, close to Switzerland, they use, there's this Fankuchen, I think that's how you pronounce it, Fankuchen, which is a jelly-filled donut. And it can have a donut, the donut can be filled with fruit, like a jam, or with alcohol. And it's like, you got you get one with the filling, apparently. Um, oh, okay, sorry, it's made with or without filling. And if you get the filling, it's so similar, similar to the coin, then that's good luck for you in the next year. That's in Germany. Now, in Russia, they have something called the Olivier salad. And it's something that apparently everyone enjoys on, on uh, New Year's Eve, or everyone being many people. Um, uh, it's potatoes, vegetables, eggs, meat, mayonnaise, rich, rich um, mayonnaise um, dressing, which is richness for the year to come. This is a story that I'm told online, so <laughs> I've never had that, but it sounds a bit like um, salad de soie. But um, anyway, that's what they do in Russia. South Africa, they, now we have a lot of women in South Africa. I've been surprised this year by how many women we have in South Africa. So hi everybody in South Africa who's watching. Um, I'm so happy to have you here, but they eat um, pickled fish. And pickled fish is um, traditional New Year's Eve food. It's made in advance. And then I think you can then like eat it for like a long time. It's, it's kind of like, um, what is that in Japan? Kimchi, where it's, it's a pickled product. So it can be, you know, eaten all year. So maybe that was in their tradition of, you know, preserving for the new year, having a, a, a prosperous and healthy new year. But if you're in South Africa, tell me what the story is, <laughs> because I'd love to know. And by the way, if I've missed a country, I know well, I have a mystic. I've missed like 100 countries. Um, tell me what your New Year's Eve eating tradition is. I would really love to know. That would be super fun to, to, to learn from you. But, you know, the food, food is more than a tradition. You know, it, it's, well, it's part of our life. Of course, we need food to eat. It's, it's, it's who we are as human beings. But it embodies, New Year's Eve kind of embodies the hopes and the aspirations, you know, for the new year. And so anything that we can do that's kind of, creates a moment, like a, a, a stepping forward moment, whether it's with a meal together with a traditional food, or whether it's drinking a, a glass of champagne, or whether it's just, you know, old Lang Syne singing the song in Scotland, you know, and, and giving people hugs. If that's what you do on New Year's Eve, then you know, that's that's what's important. It doesn't matter what the food is or what the action is. It's just that we do something to say, you know, goodbye to this year. Let's move forward into the new year with positivity and um, strength and hopefully good fortune and wisdom, but also peace. I always, um, for me, I have a tradition with my peace cards. I have little cards I bought over the years and I put them up and that I, I actually take them down on New Year's Day because that's kind of my journey into New Year's Day is hopefully, hopefully, hopefully some peace on this world, in this world, some peace on our planet. I'm just like you, so overwhelmed by how this year has turned out. And I'm, I'm recording this now in December. So I goodness knows where we'll be when this is actually being viewed and what's going on. But I just like to take a deep breath together with all of you <laughs> and pray for peace and hope for, uh, you know, some kind of tranquility and um, happiness in our lives for everybody, everyone around the world, every single 180 or 81 countries 
I love you all. Thank you for being a part of 60 and Me. Uh, happy, happy new year.